Oh, welcome back. I now want to talk to you about uh, something that's called the KYP lemma. KYP stand for Kalman, Yakubovich, and Popov, who were three of the big names in control, um, particularly in the 60s and uh, beyond as well. So I want to talk to you about this thing called the KYP lemma and use it to prove what is called the passivity theorem. And the passivity theorem is actually a fancy name for the special case of the circle criterion that we saw um, at the end of the last lecture. So we're, we're interested in some setup um, that looks like this. So we have a linear transfer function g in feedback with some sector bounded nonlinearity. And we're going to consider the case um, that the sector is uh, the entire of these two um, quadrants here. So we're considering the case that our upper line has got um, these are the wrong way around, aren't they? So our lower sector has got slope zero and our upper line has got infinite slope. So um, we, uh, we, uh, we have some nonlinearity that lives in these two quadrants here. And we saw last time that the circle criterion implied that we needed G to be in this class of um, strictly positive real functions to be able to uh, push things through with the circle criterion. And we're now going to sort of tie this more formally to some of the Lyapunov type ideas that we saw before. And the key piece, which is relating all of these Lyapunov functions, strictly positive real functions, and uh, things together, is called the KYP lemma. And proving the KYP lemma is uh, beyond the scope of this course. Um, but we need to know what it is. And so it says that um, given uh, g of s is equal to c si minus a inverse b. So we have some realization of our transfer function g in terms of our matrices a, b, and c here. So given such a g um, where a, b, is controllable and a c is observable. So this just means that those controllability and observability matrices that you saw before had full rank. Every transfer function has a realization with a b um, controllable and a c observable. It's just realizations are not unique and they can be non-minimal. So that's what the reason for this sort of technical extra restriction. You don't need to worry about that so uh, so much. But so we have um, a realization that is a minimal realization of our transfer function g. Um, then um, g is positive real, so it belongs to that class which was marginally stable with its Nyquist diagram lying in the um, closed right half plane, if and only if, and then we have two equations that this must satisfy. Um, and these, the first one of these looks very like uh, the Apanov equation from before, and that is PA plus um, A transpose P is equal to minus Q, and here, P is a positive definite matrix, and Q is a positive semi-definite matrix. Semi-definite here is very closely related to uh, positive definite. This just means that X transpose QX is greater than zero, greater than or equal to zero. So positive definite required this to be strict for all non-zero X. Positive semi-definite just allows a little bit of extra wiggle room. So G is positive real if this holds, and also, um, so that's condition one, and condition two is that P B is equal to C transpose. So it's like a very special type of solution to a Lyapunov equation. And it turns out that having this type of special solution completely characterizes this nice uh, type of transfer function that we call positive real. And furthermore, G is strictly positive real. Um, 
if there's if it, there exists an epsilon greater than zero, and such that I can put a minus epsilon p in here. So this is an extremely similar condition. If we just have this slight strengthening, we're able where we're able to just shove in a tiny amount of our positive definite matrix p in here as well, then the transfer function is strictly positive real, and this is slightly more restrictive, and in terms of our Nyquist plots, this was preventing them from touching the imaginary axis, whereas positive real ones could touch the imaginary axis. So this is the KYP lemma, um, and it's connecting those positive real and strictly positive real transfer functions that we saw before to the solutions of particular equations involving the realization of our transfer function. And the key thing it's giving us here is this matrix P. And this is going to play the role of our Lyapunov function. And so now we're going to try and prove uh, what is arguably the main result of this whole lecture, which is something called the passivity theorem. And the, passiv the passivity theorem is basically what is saying that this set up here is asymptotically stable. So the passivity theorem is used to analyze this special feedback form um, of nonlinear system where the um, nonlinearity is bounded in this big sector here. And the passivity theorem says that, um, so given um, G um, and H, so given G and H, then if G is positive real and H is in the sector that we've illustrated over here, then X star is a stable equilibrium point. So um, this is just saying that if the transfer function g of s touches um, that vertical line but always stays in the right half plane otherwise, then will be stable for any um, non-linearity non in this sector. So it's proving a special case of the circle criterion where we have just stability. And then we have the strengthening that if g is strictly positive real, and h is in the sector, then x star is globally asymptotically stable. So if we don't touch uh, the, the vertical line, except maybe uh, when we come in uh, to the origin, then we actually get something stronger, which is global asymptotic stability. And the KYP lemma is going to be what allows us to prove this uh, using our Lyapunov um, arguments from before. And the key thing it gives us is this matrix P, which is the Lyapunov function that we need. So we're going to prove the passivity theorem by using the Lyapunov function x transpose P x. Um, so what's the feedback interconnection? Um, well, it's this, where in addition, u is equal to h. C of x. So we're trying to prove stability of this feedback interconnection in our special form using this Lyapunov function here. We're going for global results, so we're going to set our region omega to be the entire space. Um, and so we just need to recall a few of our basic facts. Um, so we need to satisfy our Lyapunov checklist, so we need v of our equilibrium point to be equal to zero. This is the case because our equilibrium point is at the origin. Um, similarly, we need V to be positive everywhere else, and that's guaranteed because P here is positive definite. So all that remains is that we've got to prove that V dot is, well, strictly less than zero for um, asymptotic stability or less than or equal to zero for stability. So this is what we're interested in showing. 
And in, to do that, we need to find V dot. And so we just remind ourselves that V dot is equal to grad P dotted with the dynamics. Uh, sorry, that's grad V. And when we differentiate this expression here, this is just equal to Px. And now we just plug things in and start going. Um, so V dot is equal to, and we're going to do our same trick from before, it's going to be equal to X transpose P and then AX plus B U and then we're going to do the transposed version as well. So U transpose B transpose plus X transpose A transpose P X. So here we've just substituted in F of X is equal to AX plus B U. We're not going to substitute in for U just yet. Um, u is equal to h of c times x. We'll do. We'll deal with that at some point. Um, but um, so so here we just substituted in for our dynamics, and when we evaluated our dot product, we did a half using this is the transposed piece, and we did a half using this is the transposed piece, and so we just keep simplifying, and we get a half, and now I get x transpose. P A plus A transpose P and then I get plus and then here I get X transpose P B U plus U transpose B transpose um, P X and what does this equal? Well, this is where I use my second equation here. Well, I see that P, P, B is equal to C transpose. So this is X transpose, C transpose, U. And this is plus U transpose, C, X. And what is C, X? Well, C, X is just equal to Y. So this is, and I, sh I lost my half here. And so this whole thing is just equal to, um, and which way round do I want to write it? Um, well, actually it doesn't matter. It's y transpose u, but y and u are both scalars. So this is just equal to y times u. So we've used our um, second equation here. How can we take advantage of our first equation? Um, so let's just try to remember what we're trying to show here. So this quantity here, so now we see that this is equal to a half and then x transpose and we use this equation here and I get minus q minus epsilon p x. So what have we found? Well, if we're positive real, then this epsilon would be zero, and so that we, we've ensured that this thing here will be less than or equal to zero, because this is semi-definite. We get this property here, but there's a minus sign. So this whole thing is less than or equal to zero in the positive real. So if positive real, and in the other case, it's less than zero. So if strictly positive real, so this term here is either less than or equal to zero or less than zero. And how about this term here? Well, this is just equal to y times h of y. And so what does that look like? Well, if we look at our sector bound here, so we see that if our input is lost a minus sign somewhere. Yeah, we've got a negative feedback convention here. So 
this is the system we're interested in, where there's a, a minus h of x uh, that comes in like this. So this is equal to minus y times h of y. And so what do we notice? That if the input is to our nonlinearity is positive, then the output of our nonlinearity is positive. If the input of our, to our nonlinearity is negative, the output to our nonlinearity is negative. So the product here will always have positive sign. So this thing here, this is less than or equal to zero. And now we're done. So in the case that our dynamics was strictly positive real, we've shown that v dot is strictly less than zero for all possible values of x, except x at our equilibrium point. And if it's only positive real, this whole thing is less than or equal to zero. And this means this covers both our case of stability and asymptotic stability um, through um, exactly the Lyapunov stuff that we saw before. So this result here is called uh, the passivity theorem. Actually, strengthenings of this uh, result um, hold. So we could, for example, replace this transfer fun uh, this nonlinearity here by a transfer function that was uh, positive real or any anything else that's passive. So you normally see the passivity theorem stated as the feedback in interconnection of something um, strictly positive real and positive real um, is stable. And it just turns out that this nonlinearity is also passive. Um, so there's, so there's some, some more details on this in the lecture notes. And you can also prove all sorts of nice things that like passivity is preserved under certain types of interconnection. So if I now look at the, trend, the map from this external input to this output y, for example, if this is passive and this is passive, this map will also be passive. But the main message we want to convey here is that we have this passivity theorem that can be used to assess uh, the, the stability of this um, uh, into nonlinear interconnection with a sector in a particular form. And we're now going to use this to derive the stronger um, circle criterion that we saw at the beginning of the lecture. Thank you.